CCP's Deception of the World. Hello everyone, it's Michael here. Our program Deception of the World systematically exposes the CCP's history of deception and murder through presenting real historical events and truly influential people. Today we will tell the story of how the national government treated the flowers of the motherland, that is, the children in mainland China, who lost their parents and families in the evil old society. Chinese people have been victimized by the Communist Party for a hundred years. An innocent girl walking on the street was knocked out and fed drugs, sold to the poor countryside, chained by the neck, raped at any time for more than 20 years, and forced to give birth to a dozen living and dead children. This story became a hot topic online in January 2022, and it is believed that everyone has learned about this. The Communist government and media, however, said she and the man had a marriage license and were legal. There was also a classmate called Liu Xuezhou who was sold to others by his biological parents at a very young age to others for money. When he grew up he found his parents, but they showed no remorse and spread cursing language on their own son via internet media, forcing Liu to finally go calmly to the ocean. As the saying goes, there is no greater sorrow than the death of the heart. Do you believe the gods will forever stand by and just let the Communist Party continue to wreak havoc on today's China? whose morality and humanity have fallen to the bottom? We don't think so. As the old saying goes, it's not yet time for retribution, it will come at the destined time. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, let's get started. It is often believed that children are the first to suffer the most from war. Once they lose their families and homes, they are left on the streets with no clothes or food. This was the case in China during the Second Sino-Japanese War and resulted in thousands of orphans. According to statistics, of the 15 million refugees who were forced to relocate at that time, 4 million of them were children and at least 100,000 orphans needed immediate assistance. The nationalist government under the leadership of Chiang Kai-shek realized at the beginning of the war that children were the country's meta and the vitality of the people and that protecting children was preserving the bloodline of the nation. So throughout the war, they not only took a series of measures to save children in distress, but also formulated the five good policies of child welfare, which have modern welfare implications. Good seed, good birth, good nurturing, good protection, and good education. The good seed is the premarital examination to ensure that both parents are healthy during pregnancy. The good birth is the protection before and after the birth. The good nurturing is well understood, that is, the child's hygiene, nutrition, and health. The good education is not only education, but also about teaching children the ability to adapt to society and the ability to live independently. Finally, good protection is very important, that is, to protect the unfortunate children. Let's see how Mrs. Chung Song Mei Ling personally led the wartime children's aid campaign. In March 1938, Together with Shen Junru and Tsai Yuanpei, Song Mei Ling established the Wartime Child Care Association in Hankal, with Song Mei Ling as the chairman of the board and 286 honorary board members. Including leaders of both the CCP and the Kuomintang, military and political dignitaries, democratic and non-partisan figures, as well as cultural and educational celebrities, Hong Kong and overseas Chinese, international friends and ambassadors in China. The mission of the organization is to protect the lives of children and to make them sound citizens. According to the article, Song Mei Ling leads the rescue of refugee children in the war. In the sixth issue of the mainland magazine Yan Huang Chun In 2003, after the establishment of the Wartime Child Care Association, one of the immediate priorities was to raise money, and the other was to establish a nursery to rescue and receive refugee children. Based on the minimum monthly living expenses of 5 yuan per child, a child needed 60 yuan for the whole year. Since there was a war going on, the national government was financially strained and could not provide help. Since there was no money for childcare, fundraising became a primary way to help children. Many groups and individuals donated generously at that time. From March 10th to April 12th, 1938, a little over a month later, the Wartime Child Care Association raised 94,845.23 yuan in donations, of which Song Mei Lin personally donated £10 in foreign currency, $15, and 
and 26,389.63 yuan in cash, the highest amount. Also in March, the society established a temporary nursery in the former Japanese Tongren Hospital in Hankou. At the end of April, when the National Army was fighting against the Japanese in Shuzhou and Zhengzhou, the nursery sent two groups of people to the war zone and rescued more than 400 children from the war zone. And on May 1st, the official opening ceremony of the temporary nursery was held, attended by Generalissimo Chung and his wife. However, soon after the Japanese bombing of Wuhan intensified, the General Union of Childcare began to transfer the children from the Hankou Temporary Nursery to Sichuan by batches. From April 1938 onward, branches of the Wartime Childcare Association and nursery schools were established throughout the country and began to receive refugee children. By March 1940, there were branches in Jiangxi, Anhui, Guangdong, Sichuan, Hong Kong, Fujian, Guizhou, Guangxi, Chengdu, Zhejiang, Hunan, Shanxi, Shaanxi, Shaanxi, Ganning, and 37 nursery schools were established under each branch. The General Association for Wartime Child Care also had nine nurseries of its own. In addition, there is the Guizhou Burtz Nursery School, which was founded by the Christian Church under the leadership of the General Association, and the Chun and Children's Home in Yibin, Sichuan, which was founded by Liu Wang Li Ming in memory of her husband, Liu Jun'en, who died for the country. Director General of the General Conference, Song Mei Ling, had said this, Now the children have no family education, but rely on the nursery, and we have a lot of responsibility for them. We should make it so that they can be capable of becoming a citizen automatically, so that they can live up to the hope of the society and the donors. According to her principal, the children adopted during the war were to be trained to become the successors of the resistance to build the nation. In addition to the principles, Song Mei Ling made three specific demands at the nursery director's meeting. First, we must pay attention to the children's health and habits. Second, we must cultivate their character and inspire them with a sense of duty. And third, we must make the children aware of the hardships of the country and the hardships of material resources and make them especially hard-working and economical. During the eight years of the war, by December 1945, a total of 29,849 children were housed and educated in the wartime child care centres affiliated with Wartime Child Care Association and its branches, almost reaching 30,000. In this way, the nursery schools throughout the country provided both protection and education, and children were given primary education, and after graduating from elementary school, they were mainly promoted to secondary school. By 1945, more than 5,000 children had gone on to secondary school. After graduating from elementary school, those who were willing to learn technical skills were sent to factories such as arsenals and toothbrush factories for training and work. Many of them grew up to be outstanding representatives and qualified personnel in various fields of the country, while others chose to join the military and some even died heroically on the battlefield against Japan, just like their fathers. Song Mei Ling's leadership of wartime childcare did become a cause and played a unique role in fighting the war. An article in Modern Woman, edited by Cao Mengjun, number 1, 1946, said, The whole country's childcare work was under the leadership of Madame Chiang. This is the most relevant thing that brings results on conservation work. Since Mrs Chiang was at the top, some political difficulties were a little easier to avoid. Even the head of the Communist Party had to acknowledge the merits of Mrs. Chung's efforts to save children. In 1988, on the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Wartime Child Care Association, Deng Yingchao wrote to Song Mei Ling on the orders of the Communist Party, saying, Looking back on the years when the country was a great distress, Madame uh, devoted herself to the national war effort, fostering domestic unity, seeking international assistance, promoting the morale of the anti-Japanese people, and rescuing children and wounded soldiers, which was a great achievement. That's all for this episode. Please like and subscribe to our channel, and share with your friends. See you next time.